busk, 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 baby. Do 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 do. What? I'm Joe, and this is Kat, and you're watching Console Cocktails. Yep, this is cocktail number one, our very first episode. And this cocktail has to do with busking. This question came from Jim Galvin on Twitter, who asked me if I could do a video explaining how I set up a busking show with conventionals and moving lights. Now you might be asking, you might be asking, what is busking? Other than a really fun word to say. It is fun, yeah. <laughs> uh, but busking is basically live programming, programming on the fly, where you are making the changes um, to your show, to the lighting, right at the console during the show, right in front of the audience. Hopefully, right along with the music. Not mm. always. Yeah. yeah. As you might imagine, uh, the bigger your console is, the more faders it has, the more touch screens it has, the more bump buttons you have on there the better life is gonna be during a busking show. Yeah, because you're gonna be all over your console, so you really wanna have easy access to things that most modern moving light consoles can handle a busking show. So we've set up a show file that has a, a few brief examples for you to demonstrate some of our tips for busking. So welcome to our sample busking show file. Uh, we've got for our console the Grandamate Ultralight, and behind us we have Grandma 3D, which is our visualization program. Um, specifically, this is the house plot of one of the local clubs here in LA, set up like we're doing a concert, so a typical show that you would busk. A couple of good keys that are going to help you get through your busking show are actually the same things that will get you through programming any type of lighting show. Uh, and those are going to be organization and clear labeling. So you'll notice here we've already created some views to help us see some of the information we have patched into the console. Uh, and we've created, for instance, a groups pool here where we've laid out our fixtures so that it looks like a planned view of our stage. This makes it very easy for the operator to then go and select any of the fixtures that they're looking for. Uh, at the same time, we've done the same type of thing with our pan and tilt presets so that we can very easily select a fixture and then tell it which position on the stage we'd like for it to go to. Color and gobo preset pools also give us some very nice visual clues. And that's all for live programming. Um, in addition to setting up all those presets, once you've got that set up, you want to have a couple of sequences, a cue list, maybe a couple chases, some effects, already pre-written for you in playback on your faders. Um, here specifically, they're called executor faders. Now, you're probably already familiar with most consoles having faders and doing something you expect them to do, which is intensity. Like here, we've got our front light, and I can ride the intensity up and down on a fader. Well, additionally, again, something that most moving light consoles are going to have is going to be uh, your bump buttons. So, on these two faders, uh, I've got some red and blue pars. Um, I can also ride them up and down intensity-wise, but I've got quick access to bumping them. If I wanted to, I could even bump the front light. Probably wouldn't. <laughs> um, but because this is an automated console and because in our rig we have automated fixtures like Color Pros, for example, um, your faders don't have to just do intensity. Depending on the type of console you have and how configurable it is, you've got a world of possibilities. Um, to keep it simple though, to start off, um, this fader here, I've got intensity on the Color Pros. Uh, the Color Pros are automated, um, they don't move though. But they do have color mixing. They do have color mixing, that's true. Um, so also on this fader, besides just intensity, I can bump through different color presets that I've already made. And of course they're all labeled, so I can really quickly find the color that I want. I can use the go to button to get there when I need to. I can take the fader up and down, still control intensity, whatever you need, it's all right on there. Um, additionally in this rig, we also have some Mac 250s. Uh, Mac 250s, I have them separated out over on the right half of my faders. Um, here, same idea. I've got intensity on the fader, but when I hit go, instead of changing color here, I've got different positions because these lights do move. On an additional fader right next to it, because I like to kind of group things by fixture type, makes sense to me, easy access. I just hit this button and I cycle through the slotted colors that these fixtures have. You also on this console have executor buttons. Things where I don't need a fader, like maybe like a strobe or something like that, I want to really easily be able to just hold my finger down and get a strobe. And I'm probably gonna have a couple of them, change the speed, make it a little faster. But the idea is, as I hold my finger down, I've got the strobe, as soon as I don't need the strobe anymore, I let go, and we're good. Be One serious. of the other things that you can do with the, the Max that we have here, and with a lot of moving lights, uh, we have gobos in these fixtures. So on the uh, additional executor buttons here, uh, I've added in some quick access to some gobos. So if I simply hit one of these, 
slots in a gobo. Uh, I've set them up so that each one will cancel out the, the previous gobo that's been dropped in. If none of these buttons are selected, the gobo will be open. At the same time, once we've chosen a gobo that we'd like to have in the lights, uh, I've put in some rotation speeds down in the next slot here. First one will be a nice slow rotation for us, all the way up to a nice fast rotation. Yeah, timing is really important. Different types of songs you have. A fast rotation isn't going to work for all of your songs, so you want to have different choices. Um, and the buttons aren't the only way to change timing, though, right? No, they're not. You have <laughs> plenty of different things that we can do back on the faders here. Uh, so, for instance, on top of this look that we're sort of putting together here, uh, again, writing the levels just a little bit on the faders makes it nice, and you will find yourself doing this quite a bit. Um, for instance here, I, I've also built in, uh, let's say, a, a, a color chase. Uh, this color chase actually does access both the uh, color pros and the max that we have here. Uh, this color chase, if I start it here, uh, it's just going to be a simple jump between this sort of light blue uh, and a nice bright pink. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that I'm adjusting the fader here, and now adjusting this fader is not changing any dimmer values, but it's actually changing the speed of our chase. Uh, so I've given you the, the ability to adjust the speed of your chase here on the fader, uh, or, in addition to that, I've created one of these buttons, I've turned it into a learn button. So as you're listening to the band as it's playing, simply tap the button to the music, and the chase will adjust to whatever speed you've tapped in. I love that. <laughs> I love tap chases. One of the things that we've seen people do quite a bit is to pile on different effects onto different executors. So here I actually have uh, an executor full of effects. Uh, each cue calls up a different effect. Um, they don't look all that different from here, but you might see this is actually a, a circle with all of the lights. We'll have a, a nice ballyhoo with all of the lights. Uh, and then my third effect is just kind of the pan moving back and forth with a nice uh, sine wave to it. Uh, this I can actually pile on top of that original uh, list of cues that you saw with the Max, where we can move the lights to different positions on the stage. So for instance, I know here that the third cue in that stack will move the lights out into the audience. Well now, not only has it moved the lights into the audience, but it's also repositioned that effect so that it begins in the audience and kind of plays around in the audience there. And we can change speed, because again, one speed is not going to fit everything. Absolutely. Uh, so, an additional uh, way to perform that, uh, for instance, if we were to turn off that effect uh, and move our lights, for instance, back onto the stage. Uh, I have created over here something that we call on the uh, MA lighting consoles, it's called a temp fader. Uh, but other consoles will have the same way to do the same thing. Uh, here I have one cue that pushes the lights into the audience and also starts that same type of effect. Uh, but with a temp fader, what we can do here is if we bring up the fader just a little bit, you see just a little bit of this effect happening. So we see the lights just kind of moving very subtly around the stage and they haven't moved out into the audience. But as the fader comes up farther and farther, the lights move farther into the audience and we get much more movement out of that effect. So the temp fader allows us to kind of fade into and back out of our look. Every busing show file is going to be a little bit different. Obviously, that was a really simple show file. It's going to be different depending on the type of show you're doing. Maybe it's one band, like we did. Uh, maybe it's a festival of all different bands. Obviously, your show file is going to be different depending on the rig that you have as well. <laughs> and we only used one page of those ten faders. Yeah. Obviously, the more complicated your show is, the more pages you'll use, the more faders you'll need. Maybe you'll want wings off to the side mm -hmm. of your console. Toys. <laughs> the one thing to remember is there's no wrong way to set up a busking show. As long mm -hmm. as it makes sense to you the way you've laid it out, that's the right way. Yeah, if you can access the information when you need it, you did it right. These uh, Grandmark Toonies are actually pretty yummy. <laughs> you know what they say. Once you go black. I need to thank our sponsor, ACT Lighting. Uh, without them, I wouldn't have this fantastic table. Uh, not to mention that console that you just saw, but mostly the table. Mostly the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to thank you guys because you were the inspiration for this little video series. And specifically, thanks Jim for having a fantastic question about busking. Mm -hmm. But we need more. <laughs> yeah, so keep those questions coming and keep the drink recipes coming as well. Yeah, we like those. Uh, you can send our questions, your questions, to us on Twitter. I am at ConsoleCat. He is at HisBegate. Until then, happy programming. Cheers.